Hey, I'm Allison. This is my husband, Nick, and we've been living on the road for about six months now. The first thing you'll notice when you come into our bus is our kitchen. We wanted our bus to have a lot of separate rooms and to feel like an actual house, so that's what inspired the somewhat L-shaped layout that you see here. A big inspiration behind our build was nature. So we have uh, quartz countertops, mother of pearl tile. We have um, porcelain tile right here, uh, acacia, flooring, pine. So yeah, it's very much inspired by nature. So we have a Furion stove and oven. Our stove is almost big enough for a pizza. Unfortunately, our freezer does not fit a full-size DiGiorno, <laughs> so that's the only complaint we have there. Uh, so behind the stove, we have about three feet of prep space for cooking meals. It was important to have a really big sink since we don't have a dishwasher anymore. We have our Berkey right above our sink and we use our nozzle to fill that up. Across from our uh, countertop, we have our cabinet, so this is all food storage right here and then an RCA side-by-side -side fridge and freezer. We have a ton of storage in our bus, more than enough. We built uh, cabinets up above that you see here, and we have those on the gas struts so that it's not annoying when you open them. When we first moved into our build, we didn't have the gas struts and I was constantly holding it up with my head. So that was a nice little addition. It's those little things you realize after you've been living in a small space. Across from our kitchen, we have our wood burning stove. This is probably my favorite feature in the bus. I'll notice that when I'm watching TV at night, my eyes will divert over to the stove just because it's so beautiful to look at. Um, this is our main source of heat. We also have a propane burning um, stove over here as well, but that thing is ventless, so it does create a lot of condensation, and we prefer this for the dry heat so we don't get that condensation buildup. Um, one of the first things that we put into our bus was this tile for the wood burning stove. It was a really big pain to install. It was very hard to match up that pattern, but overall we're really satisfied with how that turned out. Uh, we have a fireball right here, and this is just for added protection. If our fire ever got out of hand, this would combust and instantly put out the fire, um, or you can even throw it in. This gives us peace of mind if we're not in the bus. After you step through our kitchen, we, you'll come to our living room. So the first thing you'll see when you come into this room is Nick's desk. He uh, is a huge gamer, so he wanted to have a really unique setup. He has a black walnut live edge desk. It's about three feet of space. Across from Nick's desk is my desk. So this is a Ikea table that we found on Facebook Marketplace for a really good deal. It has two folding leafs on the side, so we can pull that out and have our meals here. We can host game night. We can actually move it and put it right here. Three people can sit on this side and then three people can sit on the couch and we can host uh, game night or dinners, whatever it might be. Uh, across from the table, we have our couch. This is another one of my favorite features in our bus. It was important for us to have a couch that felt very comfortable. So uh, we have two layers inside this couch that I made myself. It's a high density foam. And then on top of that is a down cushion. So I took a drop cloth and sewed those both together, sandwiched them together. So it's a very comfortable couch. Under our couch, we have a custom panel that we had created in Thailand. We love the aesthetic of that. All right, so underneath our couch is our water tank. We have 55 gallons under here, and then we can easily change the water filter out here. Um, right behind this panel is where the pump is and where the, um, where the water accumulator is, where the water filter is, or excuse me, um, where all the other systems are going into the tank. So this has been an easy way to kind of tuck it out of the way. It's actually been really nice for us because all our plumbing's inside the bus, and we we want to make sure it was inside because the freezing temperatures, we can keep the fire going and just keep that tank at room temperature and run a little bit of water through the pipes and it, it, we haven't had an issue yet. 
Another feature that we have in our bus is the Samsung Frame, Frame TV. And we love this TV because we can display our own artwork on it. Um, since this is a tiny house, we didn't typically have a lot of space, a, a lot of wall space for artwork. Uh, so this TV allows you to change out the artwork on a regular basis, which is pretty cool. So you'll notice uh, we kept the majority of our windows in our bus. I think we kept a little over half. Um, it was very important for us to have natural light and have the nature outside speak for itself. So uh, we wanted it to feel like an actual house. So Nick trimmed out the windows and then I went back, sanded them and painted them. We love how they turned out. We decided we wanted to buy a, a school bus after looking at a bunch of tiny homes. And we just we considered a bunch of different options and then we, we watched a video and kind of inspired us to go the school bus route and haven't looked back since. So yeah. bought a bus, what, 2018 yep. in November off eBay for $5,000. Mm -hmm. And we flew to Indiana from Denver yep. to go and pick it up. So we bought it sight unseen. Uh, but lucky for us, we, we did buy from an honest buyer. We bought a really good bus that was ended up having good components after the fact we had no clue and we ended up having you know getting a good bus yeah. um, and so that's been nice we should have done some more research but we were a little spontaneous out. on what we we bought and uh, we just kind of went for it and then we drove it back to Denver no problems got home <clears throat> it barely fit in our driveway it was exactly 40 feet long so that also worked out we've been very lucky with the whole process I've got to say <laughs> yeah no and we converted it in our in our driveway behind our house for two and a half years. So it took us about two years and four months just on weekends and when we could mm -hmm. and uh, working full time. And then when we stepped away from our jobs in June, it took us two more months of full time building uh, to complete it. And I think overall it's about 45,000 invested just in materials and the things we utilized in the bus itself. Mm -hmm. um, we've added some things since, you know, like a WeBoost tower and a couple you know, the wine rack. elements, the wine rack. So, um, but we want to do a deck on the back eventually yeah. Yeah. to just have something to step out on from the bedroom mm -hmm. and have coffee on. Um, a couple upgrades over time, but yeah. it's never finished. Yeah. Everybody says that and it's true. You're never finished with your build. Things constantly break and you adjust and yeah, you've got to be a very innovative person, I think, to live this lifestyle. Yeah. Once you come through our hallway, the first thing that you'll notice is our bathroom. So we created this uh, bathroom door. We found the old door at a local antique shop. And then we also found the, st the stained glass separate. We cut out a hole and then inserted the glass and absolutely love how this turned out. It's probably another one of our favorite features in the bus. Behind this door is our bathroom. So it was important for us to have a very large bathroom, really wanted it to feel as much like a home as we possibly could. So we have a, a sink and vanity. We have our nature's head composting toilet. And my favorite part, which Nick would, would disagree with, is the bathtub. This is a um, 100 gallon stock tank that we got from a farm store. And I painted that and then coated the inside with Flex Seal. Um, to insulate it a little bit better. But when I fill up that tub, it takes about 20 to 30 gallons. So uh, baths aren't typically the most ideal thing in the bus, but they are a special treat when I can take a bath. So uh, besides our bathtub, we also have the Nebbia 2.0 shower head. So this is great for life on the road since we don't have a ton of fresh water. This actually mists out on you and it feels very much like a spa. And I believe it only takes 0.7 gallons of water a minute. So it's very efficient. We like that a lot. So you'll notice that we have our uh, sink and vanity right here. We decided to go with the bowl shaped sink to save on countertop space. We don't have a ton of countertop space in the bathroom, but it's more than enough for us. Uh, we put a quartz countertop on top of this vanity, and this was actually a end table that we uh, customized and then turned into the bathroom vanity.
So at the back of our bus, the first thing you'll notice is our skylight up above. We love that this allows a lot of natural light to come in, but it does have a leak. It seems like everyone that does have a skylight seems to have a leak uh, and we cannot find that leak. So we might replace that at some point. It is a little warm back here. Sometimes we may actually replace that with a max air fan. Uh, you'll also notice all of our closet space. So this is Nick's closet on this side. And then I have the much larger closet over here, which is great. It hosts all of my clothes. Haven't had a problem downsizing. We got these from Ikea. And then all we had to do after we put them together was just um, trim out the top of them so that they would fit the curvature of our ceiling. At the very back of the bus is our bedroom. We have a queen size bed. It was very important to keep all of the windows back here. We have a 360 view, which is awesome. We're able to look out at all of the beautiful views. Under our bed, we have more storage. We have baskets down below. And then we have a wall about right down the middle of the bed um, underneath. And so this back area, which we'll show you outside, is our garage area. So that hosts all of our weights and things of that nature. So we don't have a ton of storage in the back bedroom. We didn't want to enclose it entirely. We want to be able to sit up in bed um, when we want to, but we do have two cabinets up above. So we have all of our books, extra games, things of that nature. So we have um, curtains. We have the same curtains throughout the entire bus. These are blackout curtains that I believe I found at Walmart for less than $2 per curtain. So it was a very easy way. I didn't have to customize them or do any sewing of that nature. So. Our motto is the plan is not to have a plan. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we didn't even have a plan to come here until like five days before the event. Right. Um, People would ask us on social media, are you going to the school east forum? We're like, maybe we'll see where we are but yeah we didn't know where we were we live by that on a daily basis yeah we're planning to like a couple days out maybe yep um you Not know both. sometimes it works most of the time it's worked but sometimes you'll meet someone in a home depot parking lot and they're super cool and you hit it off and you go into their bus and that happened one time and it completely diverted that day's plan and yeah, he we went somewhere else. Yeah, he life. went somewhere else that you know you got recommended, and yeah, um, you're not committed to anything. So you're like, you know, that's been the best experience. I didn't want to plan just because that's what you live by when the corporate world is a grind and a deadlines and milestones and you know doing that just grinding all the time and always having to hit them, bringing its own level of anxiety and you know, yeah, to some extent having that responsibility is you know good, but just it, it wears down on you a lot. Um, you know, and so now it's like you want to be responsible for kind of things you choose to be responsible for. Right. Uh, and time you want to make for other things you do. Yep. Pretty cool, you know, so if you find something to do while you're on the road, just divert and take two or three days somewhere you never thought you would. You never really promise anybody a day that you're going to be there. You're like, eh, April. And so you just kind of say a general month, like maybe give or take a week or two or, you know, more might be on the other side of the country by then and be like, uh, sorry, can you meet us here? Uh, that's kind of a, been a cool way to live oh, yeah. for a while I love it. um uh, it's new still new for sure but uh long hopefully a long road ahead of us so let me show you the electrical cabinet um we have any normal house panel just like you know any other house would uh, we have six AC circuits and a DC side as well. We use a 3000 watt inverter converter to convert our power to AC as we need it from six Battleborn batteries. We have 600 amp hours of Battleborn batteries and this is a 12 volt system. We have a DC to DC charger which allows us to charge our solar batteries from our bus engine being on. And then we have our obviously our smart solar so it just controls our solar intake. Um, on the top of the bus, we have 1200 watts of solar and then for the 600 amp hours of battery that we have. This serves us pretty well for everything we need. I would like to have more batteries. I think it comes down to budget at that point. I'd like to do a 50 amp system, but we're not gonna be plugged in that much. So it doesn't really matter on that. A um, Couple things I would upgrade, but I really, we got what we needed. It lasts us for as long as we need it for. And we haven't really ever run out of power as long as we have a little bit of sunlight and again, if we don't, we can always run the bus and we'll be able to charge up that way. So we'll just head to a new destination. So 
So let me show you the garage area behind the bus underneath the back side of the bed. So a little disorganized, but you know, it's a catch-all garage. So we have our weight system in here. Uh, we have some dumbbells that we got on the road. We even have our, all of our backpacking gear, our camping gear. If we want to take, you know, a back road or a back camp um, and hike in and take a, you know, a couple of days out of the bus, we can. Carry our washer and dryer little barrel in here. We actually have been using it a couple of times now. We have a washer barrel and it just allows us to clean clothes when we're out and don't want to go into a laundry mat. And as long as it's a nice day, we just dry them out in the bus. And so that stays and lives here. There's a big old cavity underneath the bus that we were able to cut out. And we had one of our friends that was a welder make us a big steel case at 11 foot by two foot deep. Now, this is what I was talking originally about having for the batteries and was gonna put the batteries out here and then use the other side for storage. But uh, we decided to move those up front and then we added, obviously gave us more storage to put tools. So I can carry all my tools in the toolbox, we call it down here. Uh, I have a power outlet too, just to run any of my power tools pretty well. And you can see it's got a lot of storage for the whole space, so 11 foot long. So we actually got a massive flame king under here. It's, it's a hundred pound propane tank. It carries about 23 gallons of propane. Uh, it's the larger one because the two smaller ones we wanted weren't available. And so we just got what we could get our hands on. We can probably last without filling up our propane six months. We have a spigot out here, just fresh water, drain the tank. It's one way to drain the tank, but it's also one way we just wash your hands, have some water running outside to wash down anything, your feet off the beach. Uh, wash down the dogs, just have an outside source of water, fill a bucket up. It's actually been really convenient. It doesn't have any pressure, it's just gravity fed, but enough water comes out of here to do what you need to. And then underneath we have 55 gallons of gray water and that's, you know, the only size we could fit under the bus. If we could have done bigger, we would have, but we only have 55 gallons fresh, so 55 gallon gray uh, works out well for us. So, A lot of people ask, what we do for internet and how we get internet reliably on the road. Well, it's, it's always a slight struggle, but in order to help us, we got a WeBoost destination. Uh, it's this big 25 foot tower, it's directional, so we can point it at a tower. You know, it's not really much of a science behind it. I kind of just guess where the tower might be. Um, and it actually has worked out really well for us. Uh, we are able to get signal anywhere we are so far, been able to find it and at least boost it to have a usable signal on the bus. That allows us really to work when we want to go back to work and uh, have a reliable signal, just kind of be working every day. It allows us to be active on social media uh, and just stay current. So this was a great investment for us. We've had it for about two months now and every location we've been since, uh, we've had no issues with internet. So one of the things I found out to be really cool about this lifestyle is, is the people that do it are all very like-minded. Um, you very, you're, you're, you know, become very close friends with a lot of people you're around and, uh, you know, being able to have those relationships form is probably one of the most rewarding things about the life. Oh, yeah. You have time for people, you have time for yourself. Yep. Um, you can, uh, you don't have that grind every day, all day and exhaustion when you get home doing work, the work grind. Um, you know, so there's a lot more free spirited, you know, and a lot more mindfulness of uh, what's around you. Right. A lot of people that come here, even these events, don't even have a bus yet or they haven't ever had one. They are really inspired when they talk to people and see it done. And it's cool to see people light up um, when they see what can be done with the bus uh, yeah. and what, you know, what the experiences are with this lifestyle. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's growing every day and it's pretty cool to see it grow just from when we bought our bus. Right, yeah, um, social media has been huge for us too. A lot of people talk bad about social media. It's such, a, it's such a bad thing, but really it's opened up so many doors for us, so many opportunities. We've met some of the coolest people and we wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for our social media platform. So our social media handle is Rolling with Ophelia. Yeah, rolling, at, and it's for all three platforms yeah, that we TikTok, use. TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Yeah, but. Building that up, maybe that might lead to something one day. We appreciate you guys taking a look at our bus. You know, I hope this inspires more people to uh, see what's possible and what you can achieve even by doing it yourself. Uh, I've never lifted a hammer before this and a little bit of creativity and hard work yep. uh, and commitment allowed us to have this that we're now living in and the dream has become real. So uh, I hope that other people can uh, 
inspired to do this just you know and we inspire people to do that every day so